What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanas channel, my name is Shanks and today we are going to cast a replay for BFME 1 on the patch 2.22 on the beautiful map Mering Stream. Look at these animals over here. It's a good against evil matchup between Rohan and Isengard, just like in the films and we like those. I also like this map quite a bit, Rohan opened with a farm inside the castle and only with one farm, the reason is simple because you can capture 3 settlements outside and they are also way more valuable compared to the farms inside because they start with level 2, which means more resources, but also you will have a bit shorter recruit time for your peasants. Talking about the peasants, they don't stand a chance against the mighty Uruks from the Isengard city. And we will have more Uruks coming from the Uruk pit. There is a sneaky peasant battalion making it to this location. He will be able to capture this settlement that's going to be quite painful for Isengard and also quite decent for Rohan because he will have in total 4 farms outside. And remember, each of these farms will give you increased food bonus, reducing the cost of your cavalry, which is pretty decent. The lumber mill worker is a bit too late. Smart move from Isengard capturing this settlement with a slaughterhouse, because it's similar to farm, also starting with level 2, and it's tankier compared to a lumber mill, so it's gonna be a bit more time consuming for Rohan to destroy and take this down. War chant has been used. Uruks against peasants, it's a 3v2 situation, but outnumber advantage doesn't matter because in this game it's all about quality. Quality beats quantity. Easy. No problemo, but this settlement is gonna be still taken down. That's pretty good for Rohan. The economy from Isengard is not looking too good. Remember, each Uruk you need to recruit is gonna cost you 200 resources, while peasants they cost only 110. So almost double the money, <laughs> you know, for the Uruks. And also in a 2v1 situation without a war chant, Uruks will still lose. But this peasant does want to fight, you know. There are too many women in the battalion, Kappa Kipo. Also, this settlement has been chunked by the hobbit Merira Brandybok, who was able to get cloaked over here, which is quite impressive. Because if the and when the Lumber Mill is going to be destroyed, Isengard won't be able to recapture this as long as the hobbit is cloaked around this location. And there are a few ways you can actually use, uh, you know, tools to make him visible again. And one of the tools is to go for the Palantir, which he actually did. And with the Palantir, you can reveal the Hobbit, it reveals invisible units, and if you have no Palantir, Lourdes with the right click on the Cripple, or Saruman with the right click on Fireball or Wizard Blast, who can do the trick as well. A lot of peasants in the stable coming up, 3 farms inside, 2 farms outside, but you know, Isengard is a level 2 Uruk, that's pretty decent. <laughs> Look at the... Slay this beast, okay? What can they do? What can men do against such reckless heat? By the way, they are zooming because of the Palantir. Hobbit was slain by the Uruks and Isengard was able to reclaim the settlement. He has now in total 3 lumber mills outside. They have also the bonus, not the food bonus like the farms. They have actually the wood bonus, making your structures cost less. Up to 30 person in total, which means if you have 4 of these under your control, you can get a furnace, which usually costs 350 only for 245. You can save over a hundred resources on a very cheap structure like a furnace. Imagine the value you get on a work pit or on a siege work, for example, or armory. Level 2 Uruks, don't lose them. We will have now Rohirrim on the field. There are no pikemen, that's gonna be a glorious moment for the Riedermark faction. Trample, 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 one more trample to rule them all. They will get a lot of experience and Rohan is already one power point collected. That's pretty decent, so he needs only two more power points to get to summon the Albin Warriors, which is going to be quite needed in order to be able to deal with the pikeman spam later on. But keep in mind that Rohan as a faction is generally speaking way better against Isengard pikeman spam than Gondor is, because you can easily recruit additional peasants for a very affordable price, while Gondor has to build a barracks for this. You don't have to do this because your resource building works as a production building, and most importantly, you can recruit them all over the map, you know, for each farm you have, even offensive farms, you can recruit them while, you know, soldiers can only be recruited at the barracks. So long story short, maintaining as Isengard map control against Rohan is quite difficult. Okay. So you can creep this, no problem with the pikeman, should be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That is the Hobbit back in the business, Merida Brandybok level 3. We have industry now being used on this furnace over here, which is going to be quite helpful to get it to level 3 faster. Remember, uh, you know, the more money you get from a structure, the faster it's going to hit level 2 and level 3 later on, which of course means more durability for the structure, but also more resources. 
very valuable. Two power points for Rohan and Isengard is zero and a half, okay? So half a power point collected after the industry, Palantir and War Chant. The pikemen, they gotta disengage from this peasants and in order to deal with them now, you need to recruit berserkers, okay? Rohan is a full beast, that's pretty nice, I like it. And uh, Isengard was able to creep this, that's also very good. Now you need to fill up your bees ASAP, make furnaces everywhere and a bit more far, um, I mean towers, just to feel a bit more safe. As expected, Rohan has the dominance on the map control, but this can be changed once Isengard is able to recruit Warc Riders. Palantir will be used to get the vision to see what's going on, and he's able to see the whole base, the whole castle. And Zemix, the Rohan player, has almost the power points for the Elven Alliance. He has them now, which can actually be used to deal with the pikemen, but I think it would be better to use them in a more offensive way, Doing it here is not the worst thing ever, bad trample. But you won't achieve too much out of it, you know? Look, the, the thing with the summons is, this summon has 5 minutes and 30 seconds cooldown, which is a really long cooldown. So you want to use it in a very smart way to get the best, you know, to get the maximum momentum out of the summon. So for now, he was able, because of the summon, to get one outpost control and the creep. But maybe he could have done it way better. However, of course, it's still not bad. Look at the minimap, boys. Rohan is dominating. Dominating quite decently. I like it. Stable level 2. He has now the, ch uh, the chance to go for the horseman shields, which means more arrow resistance and more resistance to calf. And he has also both the Rohan heroes, Eoma and Theodin. Theodin is level almost 2. And Eoma already level 3. I think they were creeping this layer over here. So one more level needed for the Horse Lord of Rohan to get to unlock his Horse Lord leadership, which means 70% more damage, which is quite crazy. Okay, so, I mean, Isengard is not able to get any map control. He's sitting only on one lumber mill, but of course, industry being quite helpful here. So it will be used every four minutes and it's going to last for two minutes. It's like the craziest ability in the game, but evil factions need that. Remember, the strength of the evil factions lies in powerful, uh, you know, resource income abilities like industry, devastation, field of fires, for example, or pillage, while good factions can summon reinforcements. That's their specialty. Beautiful trampling coming. The Urukpit is exposed, actually. Level gained for Theodin King. He's level 2 now. Elma is almost level 4. Where is Lord Zaminitim? He's going to join the battlefield very soon. But beautiful commitment to the Uruk Pit. That's going to be quite painful to lose the Uruk Pit level 3. You're going to lose 50% of your production speed. The Uruk Pit is going to be indeed taken down. But can the Rohirrim get away from this location? It looks like they can get away from this location. And Elma was even able to get level 4. Most of the Rohirrim, actually all of the Rohirrim will be able to survive. But Elma has to sacrifice himself. There can't be a victory without a sacrifice. As Lourdes gets the last hit and gets from level 1 all the way to level 3 and a half. Remember, level 3, once you use your sword, you can now you have access to the carnage, which will make Lourdes to a very dangerous hero for the Rohan heroes like Theodin and Elma. The second they get crippled, Lourdes can solo kill them. In a 1v2 situation, carnage is like a, a bit weaker version of the Blade Master of Aragorn. And we know, you know, he, she, it knows, what Aragorn is able to do with the Blade Master in Anduril combination. There comes the Armory for Isengard. He has actually not enough money. Maybe Devastation, actually, yeah, can be quite helpful. It's going to give you around about 1,500 resources right off the bat. So it's quite helpful. And Rohan is making the transition into the combos or into the Yeoman Archers. He has three of these. But in a Dream World, you want to combine them with Peasants. It would make them a bit stronger. In the meantime, we have small fights between Peasants and Uruks. Pikemen, but of course the pikemen, they don't stand a chance. Lord's getting more experience over here. Level 4 almost, or level 5 almost. One more level needed. Killing those peasants is going to be quite helpful. And there comes the first Vogue Rider Battalion. And there is one more peasant. The woman. I am no man! <laughs> Look, that's so valuable what she's doing actually. Because they cost each 25, but Lord is going to just shoot at her hurt, uh, head. Because Lord doesn't care if it's a male or a woman. Okay, they're in level almost 3. That's pretty decent. Fire Rose is going to be purchased. 3 combos, level 1. But no armor upgrade on them just yet. But it's about to be changed very, very soon. Many, many workers over here. So he has in total 4 Lumber Mills. That's pretty decent for Isengard. And with the help of the Vestigian and Industry, his Eco should be able to catch up to the Eco of Rohan. Who has, by the way, double outpost under his control. 3 farms over here. 
Outpost has zero protection, easy to be destroyed. With one Walk Rider, one Pikeman, and one Berserker, they can easily take this down. Which they should, by the way, because you always want to make sure that your opponent doesn't get too much money. Because the game is all about resources, okay? If you fight, you will lose stuff. So it's all about having enough resources in the bank that you can re revive your heroes or, you know, remake your army. So you can have a stronger army than your opponent, and this can only be given if you have more map control than your opponent does. So he's committing to the outpost with Walk Riders. Alvin Summon will be used for the second time in the game. The Walk Rider will get its safety, no problemo. If also the Forge Bleeds banner has to be purchased on them, because you need to be level 2 for the regeneration part. So no problemo. In the meantime, oh boy, this is gonna be quite painful to defend. There comes the Palantir. Lourdes has to be careful. Three combos, and they have the leadership from Theorin. Remember, Elma can't give leadership to the combos, okay? But he can give leadership to the horses. They have no Forge Blades, however, yet, but it's about to be changed now. Their damage will be now going up significantly, and you can see the furnaces, almost level 3, will be destroyed in a few seconds. This will be quite painful, because now, even if you replace this, it will need a long time to reach to level 2, to level 3. It's going to be a quite big handicap to your economy when you play Isengard in this situation. Lourdes is being chunked by the combos of Rohan. One of them is level 2. Rohan combos, super underrated. And that's why I like about what I like about BFME 1, patch 2.2 the most. You can see the diversify army over here. Rohan has literally everything. He has combos, horses, heroes. It's like, you need all of these. You, need, you, can, you, you can't win the game anymore with one single unit. That's not possible. You need heroes to support your army. You need firepower. You need mobility. You need all of this, you know? Okay, so, I mean, he's poor. He's far away from getting to the point of recruiting Saruman. And I think Rohan, what he needs to do, because he knows the Vorten is on cooldown. So basically, go back to the well, recover, and commit before the Vorten is going to be available for the second time, okay? Warchant has 2 minutes and almost 30 seconds cooldown. So it's only active for a minute. Then you have a minute and a half time in which your opponent has no access to the Warchant, which is, at this point as we are speaking, the only leadership Isengard has. Because Lourdes is still only level 4. Yes, he's close to level 5, but being close isn't helpful. You need to be there. You need to be at level 5, okay? His 3 combos, his eco is quite big time messed up. Without Devastation, he would be out of the game by now. So going for Devastation, of course, it's like a double-edged sword. It's gonna slow you down a bit. Trample time! Lourdes, get, what, what is he doing? Oh, he will get crippled with his theory. King, Lourdes getting level 5. That's big, beautiful healing coming. Use Glorious Charge, maybe. Use it. But be careful. Trample with this units, maybe. I don't know. I would have gone for the Trample, by the way. Of course, the Glorious Charge. Oh, but in the meantime, the Vorg Riders are crashing the peasants. Sharku, send out your Vorg Riders. Lords, one-shotting Theorin. Sit down, Horse Master. And unlocking his level 6. The Pillage is unlocked. Now, Isengard has three tools to boost his money. Devastation to cut the trees and turn them into money. The uh, Industry to boost the furnace and the resource income by 300 person in total. And of course, Lourdes' is pillage to make bank every single time you kill enemy units. So it's like, you know, Isengard is like the Switzerland of the Lord of the Rings in the Middle Earth, okay? We get to see more Rohirrim. The only reason why Rohan is able to do all of this is because of this outpost. He has three level 2 farms over here, each giving you 20 every 6 seconds. And this snowballs quite quickly. He has good map control too. And that's what I need to give credits to Zemix. He never stops giving attention to the minimap and he never stops caring about the map control, which is one of the most important things, if not the most important thing, in order to win your game more, you know, repeatedly. Isengard is committing to the outpost. Aragorn has been crippled, but going for Aragorn would be a big mistake. Aragorn is a tanky boy. It will take you a long time. But he has Warchan and Lord's leadership, which means he has 110% more damage. So he'll... He's on cooldown, but he has Atelas. Atelas has to be used now. Boom. Here he's coming in clutch. You can see, while they are focusing down Aragorn, the elves are slaughtering the pikemen in the front. They are getting actually slaughtered. Aragorn has been taken down. Rain has been activated. 
Yes, Alvin Wood, but he's no glorious charge. He's gonna go for the trample. Remember the pikeman of the combo has been taken down. He's trying to reposition them in a decent way. Cripple is on cooldown. Big commitment. While this happening, elves are shredding, shooting. Alvin summoning from the to sandwich the player. He's going for for. Oh boy, that was really close actually. Can he kill him? One more hit? No, really close actually. One HP for the new king of Rohan and lords will be taken down. What a big throw! And what a great comeback at the same time big throw from isengard and great comeback from rohan he lost his aragorn but he won the fight big time and trading even is always good when you have the more map control because you can as your economy is quite good you can replace all of the stuff you lost but your opponent will struggle to do the same thing okay alvin will be pleased but rohan isengard can cover this okay so now it's debatable but he's gonna go for it now it's debatable if you should cover or not I I was always against covering, but I think if you don't cover, he will just spam land over the, all over the place, and the longer the game goes on, every what, in four minutes, he will have another land on the field, you know? It's quite painful to fight against that. But of course, rain also kind of, I mean, land is going to also hurt your rain ability, quite a big, quite big, so, with that being said, it's, you know, situational, I think, you know? You need to kind of see it from situation to situation. Rohan has good map control again, you know, he's even a peasant, hobbit, he does, he makes everything, but affection is the offer. He keeps recruiting more peasants, and I like this playstyle. So just wait now until the duration of the war chain is gone, and you can fully commit to this army. Remember, Lourdes has been killed, but he's gonna be back very soon. And he actually goes for a Saruman at the same time, okay? Saruman is, of course, a very important hero. Aragorn is gonna be revived too, same as with Theorin King, who is level 4, has the glorious charge, has elves and they are getting shredded. The pikeman crossbowman combo is by far the weakest combo in terms of stats because the pikeman in the front are so weak against fire arrows that elves are able to shred them. So in a dream world, you don't want to do this. You want to actually make Uruk crossbowman combo. You see the hand. You want to make Uruk crossbowman combo and then you want to put some pikeman not combined into your combos in the pork pan formation because Uruk's compared to the pikemen are way tankier against elves so elves will need to shoot them way more often to take them down which means more damage can you have more damage potential from your crossbowmen because the only good thing about the combination is that elves cannot manually focus your crossbowmen they need to fight front to back okay you can't select to attack the crossbowmen in the battalion you need to click to, on, on the combo and you gotta always kill the frontline first. So, in this case, the pikemen will get killed first, then your crossbowmen are gonna be exposed. But because of the pikemen being so weak against elves, it's not the best thing in the world, okay? Okay, here's a big army over here, and dude, rain is still on cooldown. So, so, so. Let's see. Let's see what can happen. Fireball is available! Beautiful fireball from Saruman! Holy guacamole! You like those? Lourdes is in Afghanistan. Lourdes joined the army, by the way, dude. Oh boy. He's showing that he's the best wizard of Middle Earth. We nerfed him a couple of times. He actually now costs almost 6,000. But yet, he is showing dominance. And that's that's okay, because remember, Isengard is only two heroes Lourdes and Saruman. While Rohan has what, seven heroes, Ar Gondor has four heroes. Mordor has three heroes, we have or four heroes with Gollum actually. But we have only two heroes, and they have to be good. And especially this dude, when he's higher level than five, look 60% from this dude, 50% armor from this dude. In then Warchan 2, we have a hundred percent armor and hundred and ten percent damage on a very strong army, while speechcraft can be used over and over again to give your army more levels, which also means more armor and more damage output. Saruman is going a bit... In this situation, there are too many elves, and I wouldn't go crazily far. I would always put my heroes a bit more behind, so let my combos tank the damage, because at this point, you always need to see the full picture. At this point, Isengard has more leadership than Rohan, which means Saruman doesn't have to go for a risky play to win the fights anymore. So all he, can, all he needs to do is stay in a safe spot behind your army, so you can't get hurt, and you provide your leadership, uh, leadership to the army. Lords plus this, plus land, plus warchant. It's more than Theorin and Aragorn. 
Because Legolas is only level 1. He needs to be level 5 for the leadership. But he's going in too deep. Also, uh, Legolas is, of course, big hero here. He didn't use the uh, Hawk Strike. If he would use Hawk Strike, he would be almost dead. There comes the trample, 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 trample. In the meantime, Saruman is trying to disengage. Elves are kind of tunnel vision focused. There comes the Cloud Break on the army. Aragorn has been... Um, you know, crippled, but in this situation, you don't want to focus Aragorn. Aragorn is too tanky. Lord, in the meantime, chasing down the Rohirrim, getting too, ar too far away from the army, not providing leadership anymore. In the meantime, the elves, what is Legolas doing? Did he kill Saruman? No, he didn't. He's running into the next combo. Legolas, the prince of the Mirkwood elves, will get slain without using his Hulk Strike. Okay, that's painful over here, my friend. That's painful. What a big fiesta it was, actually. He was able to save three of his Rohirrim, a few of his elves, but remember, his, he lost... What? How did these heroes die? So he lost three heroes. It's a big W in my book for Isengard. Farad is now only 10 power points away from getting to summon his Balrog. But before the Balrog has to be summoned, Isengard has to find a way to get more map control, especially these two outposts. He gotta get them, okay? That's the key to victory. And one of the easier way to do this is to go, you know, screw the structure. You don't need it. Because when you are this far away in the game, you know you will get Balrog. So you can, for a siege, use your Balrog to break the gate. You don't need siege weapons at this point anymore. You just gotta make Vork Riders, okay? You gotta build the Vork Pit, make three, four Vork Riders, make sure to get the map control. Make like two armies, you know? One going to the top, one going to the bottom. Because Rohan can't com compete with two armies simultaneously. So he needs Theodine and everything. And Theodine can't be at two places at the same time, you know? So that's what you need to do. Because with the ring, even without ring, let's be real. With Warchant, Lord, Saruman leadership, in three combos, it's going to be quite difficult for Rohan to fight against you. So with that being said, you should go for the outpost control. This will give you more power points, of course. And then you are good to go. All right. 11 power points almost in the bank. He's making more and more combos, but refusing to make war riders. That's kind of sad. We even see more peasants because he wants map control. He doesn't want, you know, Rohan uh, Isengard to have that much money. Keeps making more and more. The outpost here is going to be quite difficult. Rohan's money should be looking not very good because he keeps spamming units. He has almost full population of army. They have actually a very good mix. They have two Rohan heroes, Aragorn, lots of, you know, Rohirrim with a lot of elven warriors. And when you have this much map control, you can do whatever you want, you know. The game is fun when you have money. The game is not fun when you are struggling. There comes the glorious charge moment. Trample, trample, trample. Saruman is being in the front again. Aragorn is manhandling those ballista. Saruman has to disengage, but again, he doesn't provide leadership to this army. He doesn't. But Rohan is fighting for whatever reason on the enemy land. He's making the mistake again, focusing down Aragorn. Kill the army first. Screw Aragorn. You can't kill him. You can't burst him that fast. Normally, you gotta kill the heroes first, but Aragorn is an exception to this rule, okay? So if he would focus the elves and the Rohirrim, he would have won this fight big time. Elven would be used, but instantly caught by Tindal Lane. Remember, they have both the cooldowns. The same cooldown, beautiful fireball coming in from the white wizard Saruman. Can Aragorn get away from this fight? Lords has to shoot at him. Lords, one more shot, but these two archers will be able to kill him in level 5 unlocked. Six and a half power points for Rohan and Isengard is 17, okay? 17. The Ballista is gonna be one of the reasons why he might lose this game, because Ballistas, they don't do anything in this situation besides feeding power points to Rohan, okay? Because, look guys, you, he doesn't need Ballista to win the fight. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need Ballista to break the gate too, because he will have Balrog eventually, anyway, in, in a bit. So you don't invest money into stuff you don't need. They also cost 600 each, you know. Elves, though, shredding the combos. Beautiful shot from the Ballista. One more shot. They are running in, but again, exposed Ballista. Beautiful fireball coming in clutch. The Rohirrim are trading their lives to destroy the Ballista, but they will die for it, of course. No problemo. But again, it's good. Remember, Rohan has so much map control that it's good to treat even. Normally, it's horrible to lose your horses like this, but he has multiple level 3 farms all over the place. He's Bill Gates, you know. Cloud Breaks are beatable. Saruman it has to be closer to the combos. To provide more leadership. There comes the Rain, of, I think. Yeah, Rain has been used too. Rain is countering everything, by the way. And Cloud Break can't counter Rain. So even if you get rid of the Rain visually, Rain is still active. So your leadership is gone. 
Big W, 20 power points collected for only 20 power points. In the meantime, look at this. Peasants are slaughtering the pikemen. A lot of macro is required in the late game. People are losing the focus. The game is getting exhausted if you play it for 20, 30 minutes. The outpost has been fully destroyed. Badrock is available. But the outpost here is going to be quite dangerous. So it, what this player has to do is get this outpost first. Make a second army, rotate to the bottom as you rotate to the castle of Rohan. You summon Balrog here. You fly in. You destroy the citadel. You breath fire this way to destroy the gate. Then you go in and GG. It's over. But Rohan is only half a power open away from his own AOD. That's the main problem. AOD is able to kill a unmobile army like Isengard army. They are very powerful, yes. But they are immobile. And they can't get away from the offbreakers. What, what Warcarders could do. Remember, Vorks are faster than EOD, so you have no catch potential. Lots of Rohirrim is trying to get the missing power points for the EOD. Where is the Balrog? Here is the Balrog, but he has now the power points for EOD. Will he summon the EOD to kill the Balrog? I would do it. I would summon it right here and send like two battalions of my EOD to kill the army. But he's not gonna do it, okay? Did he recruit all his heroes from this citadel? Let me take a look into this. Yeah, he did actually. It's gonna cost you lots of time. They were highly leveled. Beautiful breath fire coming in clutch, destroying the farm in the gate. Now you gotta destroy this structure first. Level three structures, quite valuable. But there comes the EOD. Don't forget about me, <laughs> dude. That's so lame. I hate EOD and Balrog so much in this game. But you gotta need them at some point. Lords, fast hero, but not fast enough to disengage from the EOD. EOD. He has slain, destroyed everything. He has still a big army and someone is available for the Rohan. He was getting so many power points from using EOD. And almost the full castle destroyed. But you can see the map control importance in this game more than ever, okay? You can see he has so much money. He can easily revive all his heroes. He can easily rebuild his castle. He can demolish everything and build the castle from the beginning. He's going for the end summon and end mode simultaneously. So the ends are going to war, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Isengard has lost the heroes. What this ends need to do is throw rocks to the Orphan. Make it just like in the films, you know what I mean? Beautiful and throw rock ability. And throw rocks, actually, if you don't know, these rocks are hitting like a truck. They are easy to be dodged, but if you don't dodge them, they will crush your army in a second. They are hitting extremely hard against units and even heroes. If even though hit him axes upon the field, boys. And mood is building up. Can the heroes make it out? I don't think so. They are level 8. Level 7, that means 2 minutes and 30 seconds revive time for each of them, which is a long time. So the bigger punishment when you lose highly leveled heroes. Even more ends. Go for 3 beer to give them leadership too. <laughs> the last march of the events begins. Dude, what an epic game this... I mean, we, we have seen legit everything beside Eowyn and Gimli, but Rohan has to offer. We have seen peasants, we have seen Yomon we have seen elves, we have seen Rohirrim, Rohirrim archers. We have seen almost every hero beside the ones I just mentioned. And we even got to see ants. That's the full potential of the Rohan faction we have seen. And with the full potential of the Rohan faction, you can win the game. And to make it like this with the ants is even crazier. It's gonna burn. He lost the Orphan too. Oh, peasants coming. I mean, this guy playing very good, actually, you know. He's like, for focus. You know, this guy, this guy is like going for the win. He's focused into, into the gameplay. And it's fun to watch this. Still making a lot of peasants. Going for the outpost. That won't, that will deny him again the heroes. So no heroes, no army, uh, no leadership for the army. You will lose. Heroes are an essential part in the lead game. And it's better if you invest them into the early game. There comes Cloudbreak. He's used Palantir to give them resistances, but it's only affecting this unit. They were too far away. The slow is crazy. You lose 50, 35% uh, of your armor, 30% of your movement speed. It's crazy, you know. Oh boy. What can man do against such a reckless seed? He's trying to build, rebuild the Orvang, but look at the minimap, boys. Isengard is only one settlement over, over here. Rohan has the full map. Isengard is broke, he's poor, he can't compete with the Riddermark faction. And in this version, Gandalf was not even required. Gandalf didn't even have to come to eat 
Rohan, you know? The peasants, they were evil, they were strong enough to defend themselves against the forces of Isengard. Beautiful performance, three beard, wizard must pay. <laughs> and he's throwing rocks to the orphan. Dude, flashbacks from the films, goosebumps situation. The ballista is ready, <laughs> but the ballista is destroyed. Two hits required. You need only one hit before we actually nerfed. I mean, we, we buffed the armor of the siege weapons against the horses. It's gonna demolish everything. That's gonna be the end of the game. GG, well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this game. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button. I will see you next in the next video. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.